Greetings from the Kenyan teacher. Welcome to KCSE Chemistry Paper 2 for the year 2017. Question number four tested on what I will call qualitative analysis in theory. This is an area that is always or normally tested in practicals, but I want to tell our students that in chemistry theory, you may also be given some information about an unknown substance. You might be given some information about an unknown Akia solution, and then from there, you are expected to know the catch ion and the anion that is present in the unknown solution, like it was brought in number four of 2017 KCSE Chemistry Paper 2. Join me as we go through the question together. So we are told W is a colorless aqueous solution with the following properties. One, it turns blue litmus paper red. From this point, we can tell that W is an acidic solution. Two, on addition of cleaned magnesium ribbon, it gives off a gas that burns with a pop sound. So magnesium ribbon is a metal and the gas here that burns with a pop sound is hydrogen gas. So again, point two confirms that W is an acid solution. Three, on addition of powdered sodium carbonate, it gives off a gas which forms a precipitate with calcium hydroxide solution. This gas is obviously carbon 4 oxide. So point 3 is still confirming that solution W is an acid because it's able to react with a carbonate of sodium to give us carbon 4 oxide gas. Point 4. When warmed with copper 2 oxide powder, a blue solution is obtained, but no gas is given off. So here again, copper 2 oxide is a base. So we are able to get here a salt and water, but no gas is given off. So point 4 again is confirming to us that W is acidic. Lastly, on point 5, we are able to get some hint here because we are told on addition of aqueous barium chloride, a white precipitate is obtained. So point five is giving us a hint that the anion present in acidic aqueous solution W is actually sulfate. So for us to identify W, we now have a hint in part five. And the question we want to ask ourselves is, which solution is acidic and contains sulfate ions? The answer is very simple. W is actually sulfuric six acid in its dilute form. So with that, we can now go ahead and answer our questions. So part A, Roman 1, we are asked to state what properties 1 and 3 indicate about the nature of W. And I believe we've agreed from our discussion that the property here is that W is showing acidic properties. So the property here is acidic property. Then, Roman 2 of part A, 
we are being asked to give the identity of W. And here, we have been able to answer the question that the only acidic solution that contains sulfate ions is sulfuric 6 acid in its dilute form. So W is actually sulfuric 6 acid. And because we've been told to identify, we may also allow the formula. There we are. So each one of these is one mark each. Now, name the colorless solution formed in 2 and 3. So in 2, if you can see here, we are adding a cleaned magnesium ribbon to sulfuric 6 acid. So what we are forming here is simply magnesium sulfate. For one mark. And for part 3, we are adding powdered sodium carbonate. So what we are forming as the reaction proceeds is simply sodium sulfate for the other mark roman 4 of part a is asking us to write an ionic equation for the reaction indicated in 4 so in 4 no in 5 sorry in 5 we are adding barium chloride so here the white precipitate being formed is actually barium sulfate so Barium ions in aqueous form from barium chloride will react with the sulfate ions from our substance W, which we have identified as sulfuric acid, and you are able to get the barium sulfate as a solid, which then forms as a white precipitate. So this is one mark, but if you don't indicate the states, we will deny you a half a mark for that answer. Part B of question 4, 2017 KCSE Chemistry Paper 2, asked that element V conducts electricity and melts at 933 Kelvin. When chlorine gas is passed over heated V, it forms a vapor that solidifies on cooling. This is actually what we call deposition or in simple terms sublimation. Now, the solid chloride dissolves in water to form an acidic solution. The chloride vapor has a relative molecular mass of 267 and contains 19.75 of V. At a higher temperature, it dissociates to a compound of relative molecular mass 133.5. When aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to aqueous solution of the chloride, a white precipitate is formed which dissolves in excess alkali. Very long statement here, but with the information given, we can go ahead and start answering the questions. So at the end of the day, we shall realize what element V is and what its chloride looks like. So, for part 1 of Roman 1, we are asked to determine the empirical formula. So as usual, when dealing with empirical formula, we shall have a tabular kind of working. So we have... Uh, v, element V, and element Cl for chlorine being involved here. So we shall start with the mass. And for the mass, we shall take the percentages to be the masses. So V, we are told, is 
0.75%. So we take that as the mass. So out of 100, that leaves us with 80.25 as the percentage for the second element chlorine. Getting this out of 100 earns you the first half a mark. Next is to go for the relative atomic mass. For V, we can see in additional information, V has been given as 27 to be the relative atomic mass and chlorine is also given as 35.5. So from here, we are able to get number of moles. As usual, we divide the mass by the ram or by the molar mass. And this gives me or gives us 0 0.73. For chlorine, we have 80.25 being divided by 35.5. And we are supposed to get 2.26. So from here, we can do the mole ratio where we are dividing the number of moles by the smaller one. The smaller one here is 0 0.73. So that gives me ratio 1 to ratio 2.26 divided by 0 0.73, which is 3. So we are getting mole ratio of 1 is to 3. And for that matter, the empirical formula for our compound is going to be VCl3. On a word of marks, division by 27, half a mark, division by 35.5, half a mark, and we have the final empirical formula, a half, totaling to two marks. Part 2 of Roman 1. We are asked now to find the molecular formula. So we know our empirical formula multiplied by a factor N is supposed to give us the molar mass. And here we are told the chloride vapor, the chloride vapor has a relative molecular mass of 267. So we shall equate this to 267. And then from here, we know V is 27, and 3 chlorides would be 35.5 times 3, giving me 106.5. So all these times a factor N is giving me 267. If you do the summation here, I'm supposed to get 133.5 and to be 267, so that my N would be 267 over 133.5, which gives me a factor of 2. And therefore, the molecular formula will be V2 of them and Cl6 of them. In terms of a word of marks, addition here half a mark, division here half a mark, Final answer here, half a mark. And getting the relation that empirical formula multiplied by factor N should give you the molecular mass also and you another half a mark, totaling to two. So candidates, we now have a hint that actually our chloride of V is actually aluminum chloride which exists as a dimer. A dimer is a chemical combination of two molecules. So instead of AlCl3, we usually have Al2Cl6, which is supposed to be ionic, but we know from Form 2 knowledge that it behaves like a molecular substance because of bonding. So for Roman 2, part B, we are now asked to draw the structure of the chloride vapor and draw the bond. So here, the examiner was testing bonding in the dimer AL2Cl6. 
but al has been given as v so we can decide to use v or you can change v into uh, the actual symbol it's allowed but for now let us just draw uh, v as given in the question so normally this is how aluminium chloride is bonded if we look at uh, the information we had in form 2 so this is how the bonding is so where my arrows are I have what we call dative or coordinate coordinate bonds and I believe using the information in form 2 we know what I mean by a dative bond and then here we have the ordinary covalent bonds so we are told to label the bonds that's where the marking points were so a half a mark for the covalent bond and a half a mark for the dative or what we also call a coordinate bond totaling to one mark the last question we are asked to write the equation for the reaction that forms a white precipitate with sodium hydroxide so here the white precipitate is actually V hydroxide or simply aluminium hydroxide. So, a student had three options. One is that V chloride in solid form would react with sodium hydroxide in aqueous state to give the hydroxide of V in solid state which comes at a wise precipitate and you end up getting some sodium chloride as well balanced with a 3 and a 3 on sodium hydroxide the other option is now to give its dimer V2Cl6 again solid reacting with sodium hydroxide to give this time V hydroxide steel and sodium chloride but then now for purposes of balancing we need a 6 a 2 and a 6 a student also had the option of writing the ionic form so we would have V 3 plus in aqueous state reacting with hydroxyl ions in aqueous state to give the white precipitate V hydroxide in solid state and of course we balance with a 3 on the hydroxide ion that would be awarded one mark any of those three up to that point we are through with our short video on what we have called qualitative analysis in theory. Thank you for your time and keep it the Kenyan teacher.